Hello, my friends. I'm back. I know my filming has been very sporadic lately. My answering has been taking forever. I do apologize as most of you are in the same situation as I am. Life is really hectic right now. So I do apologize if you've asked a question and I haven't gotten back to you. I'm just... <laughs> I have to split myself into five people at this point to get everything done. But I wanted to come on and do a video because I have lost my juju over the last couple of days not being able to play with paint and I need to try to find it again. So my Artscape are the paints that I am going to be using tonight along with a few others because as you know, I got these paints. I absolutely love them. I want to see how they behave with other brands. Now, I have a couple missing that I'm going to be using tonight. But I want to see how they play with other brands. So, we're going to do an original Dutch pour. No talk about Bloom or Cell Activator or House Paints or Untinted Bases. None of that. We are using an original acrylic pour recipe, which is mixing your paints with American Floetrol and water. That is it nothing else no silicone nothing so these paints come off of amazon i have the link in my amazon shop and i absolutely love them they are a medium body paint very well pigmented and i'll just show you one really quick in case you haven't seen them yet i know a lot of you have um but they work really really well so i want to see how they play with other brands so i Pulled out uh, three or four different brands. So here is the body, okay? All of the paints that you are about to see, I have this much paint in the cup, okay? So I would say about a level teaspoon worth of paint with three ounces of Floetrol. I measured. And then added to that, I have one, I'd say three quarters to one ounce of water mixed in. And I'm going to show you the consistency. It's pretty runny because you want it to be runny for an acrylic pour. So there you have it. Very runny. So for a little Dixie cup, about a teaspoon, a level teaspoon of paint, three ounces of American Floetrol, and let's say one ounce of water, okay? Now that only applies to a medium body paint. If you're going to go ahead and use something that's more fluid, the ratios change. And I have a video that I'm going to link to the end of this one, the six uh, six recipes for original acrylic pouring. You will see where I use different body paints and how you alter your measurements uh, according to the consistency. But anyway, I love these paints. I have them linked below. And I'm going to show you the colors I'm going to use right now. And then we are going to start. I'm super excited. So I'm using Cerulean Blue by My Artscape. And here is that one. They're all the same consistency. I just showed you the raw sienna. Then we have Payne's Gray, also by My Artscape. Okay. Then I have, let's see, Do -do -do -do. Prussian Blue by Grumbacher. I have here Cobalt Blue Hue by Windsor Newton, Windsor and Newton. Okay. Then I have Cobalt Teal by Blick. I have this beautiful Thalo Turquoise by Holbein. And then we have Bright Aqua Green from Liquitex. Iridescent Green Yellow by Pebio. And the last one is 24 Karat Gold by DecoArt. 
okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up I'm going to put my white paint on my canvas. I'm going to flood the whole canvas with white paint. I'm working on a 16 by 20 gallery, gallery wrapped canvas. So it's a level three with the thick sides. And for my white, I'm using something different tonight. I'm going with the Decolart Americana. And that is mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. All right. And it's about really close to the same consistency. I'm working on my Lily Vefe mat. If you're interested in one of those, it is a silicone mat. Um, I have a link below. They come in different sizes, different prices. They come, have some for Lazy Susan and once the paint dries, peels right off resin. Uh, you could use it for all kinds of uh, applications. So um, I was gonna flood the canvas first, but I think I'm going to do it on camera because I had a question and I have not forgotten about the q and I'm getting there as soon as I have five minutes left in the day to myself, then I will get to that. But I haven't forgotten. I have all your questions compiled. But anyway, one of the questions I always get is how much paint do you is supposed to be on the canvas? Well, here's the easy answer. It's just supposed to be covered. So if you take your paint, your white paint, and pour it on there, and then tilt it until it's all covered, you just want a thin layer on there. That's it. There, there is no measurement as far as that is concerned. Now, I know that there used to be a way to look up how much paint you would approximately need to cover a certain size canvas. I'm not sure where that is on the internet, but I can tell you this, okay? Um, there is an, a resin cal uh, calculator on artresin.com, and because resin is fluid, I would assume that you would need the same amount of resin to cover a canvas that you would for acrylic paint. So you could always go there, but... Here's the thing. You're always going to have some leftover, so try to put it into some cups that you can save it. So you see how I just tilted that around, and that's nice and flat now. So now I really don't have to touch that anymore. What I'm going to do is add a little bit here so that I could tilt that or even press it over the side. Same over here. You want to make sure that your sides are nice and coated, especially after the painting is done. I'm going to show you what I do, but you definitely want to make sure your sides look nice and neat, no drips. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, you want them to look nice and neat. Nobody wants a painting with big, ugly drips going down the side. No matter how pretty it is on the front, you want it to be pretty on the side too because people walk by and they can see the side of the painting. So if you can, you should be really taking care of them. Now, what you can do at this point is you can take your white and go all the way around Okay, especially with a Dutch pour, you want it to be nice and um, when the, the paint flows over the sides, you want them to flow evenly over the sides and have it look nice. It will be hard if you have paint that is now coming over the side after you're done, a stream of paint that comes over the side nice to fill in any blank spots. So what you should do is do it now. And an easy way to do that Get a squeeze bottle, put your white paint in it, hopefully I have enough left. If you don't have enough left, you can always make a little bit more. And then you want to go around your sides. Just like so. So just take a look and if there's paint that is missing, go along your sides and fill it in. 
just like this. Okay. Same thing on this side. Do that all the way around. Then your paint, when you, you do the blow dryer or you do your tilting, whatever you're doing, it'll flow over the sides. They'll all be covered nice and neat. And here's another thing, another tip. Let's say you do a painting and you hate it and you scrape it. You want to make sure before you reuse your canvas that you paint your sides a solid color to avoid the previous drips showing through, okay? So there you have it. And just let it drip down and fill in where it needs to. So now we're all ready to have a go at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down um, the paint gray first, and I'm just going to do a snake-like movement across the canvas here. I always start off of the canvas. I don't know why, but I just feel like I get better motion going that way. And then up next, I'm going to put, I believe this is the cerulean blue. And I'm just going to follow that pattern with all of the colors. Then I'm going to do the cobalt blue. I hope you are all faring well and feeling well. So far so good here. Okay, so that was that one. Now I think I'm going to use that burnt uh, um, raw sienna. And I know this seems like an odd color to put in, but we're going to. Then I'm going to use that gold, the 24 karat gold. I'm going to do two passes with that one. I'm just staying inside that barrier. Now I am going to use some of, let's do the green. Nope. I lied. Cobalt teal. It's going to have a very earthy feel to it. Then the green. Kind of a lot of paint, believe it or not, but it is what it is at this point. Now this one here is the Thalo Turquoise by Holbein. And this one I'm gonna cross over to do a little bit more this way. Okay, then the bright aqua green. That's a lot of paint. 
lots of paint. That's okay. I haven't painted in days, so I get to use triple the amount. <laughs> I'm not going to be saying that when I go to blow this sucker. <laughs> I'm going to be using my blow dryer to do that, by the way. <laughs> All right, and this is the last one, which is, which is the Prussian blue, I believe. You know, the best advice I can give you is just have some fun. Go with the flow, literally. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we need to do before we start moving it around is torch our bubbles. Someone asked me, can you use a heat gun for the bubbles? No, you cannot. The heat gun does not work with acrylic pouring. It does with resin, not with acrylic pouring. With paint, you will cause a instant crust on top of your painting if you try to use a heat gun. So don't do it. <laughs> it has to be a torch to pop those air bubbles. I mean, you can take 20 centuries to pop it with a lighter if you want, but... Those little torches, the ones that I have, um, they're really user friendly. You just, you know, have a fire extinguisher whenever you have any kind of flame in your house. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm low. This is really, really a lot of paint. Way too much paint. All right, hold on. too much. Woo. And that was on low. <laughs> it was flying all over me. <laughs> oh, we got some really nice cells going on here though, but we got to fix this area. Because I've got all this paint here and nothing over here. Wow. Hmm. I wonder how we can fix that, actually. I mean, I could always put a couple of colors. Let me see if I can blow that out a little bit more. You know, the thing is, is that I cannot stand this blow dryer right now. The nozzle that's on it is driving me crazy. It's an odd shape. I'm going to try to pop this off really quick. Add a little more color here and try to work it into this, the scheme. Unless I tilt. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. This is absolutely gorgeous. I just have way too much paint though. Let's see, we're going nice and slow. We don't want to lose it all. Come on. Don't leave me. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Now, it doesn't look like a Dutch pour at all, but... It is a beautiful painting, nonetheless. Got some really, really big cells, too. Here. 
So you see that uh, raw sienna, how it blended in really nice. I'm going to leave that alone. I actually love that. It's not your typical Dutch pour, but who cares? We got a plenty of those. We need something different here, right? So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to give you a close up. That is really, really pretty, though. Absolutely. All right, so here we go. And I could just tell, you know, once there's resin on this, it's going to be bananas. Lots of cool effects in there. So I want to thank you guys for sticking by me and being there through these difficult times. I'm hoping that my videos help you a little bit also. Take your mind off all the craziness. And I will be sure to show this once it's dried and resined, along with a few others that I have done. So, I guess that's it. You know, I just really don't have anything to say tonight. You know where everything's located. I just want to know, um, let you know that I'm praying for all of you. And we shall make it through this. And be stronger cleaner people because of it <laughs> i love you all guys happy pouring